Well, it's time now for an historic moment on the BBC, as for the very first time we cross to the studios of the world's newest and most prestigious satellite broadcasting network, KYTV. But the minister claims that Pamela Borders merely took down his dictation. <laughs> Good evening. We were now due to bring you I Love Lucy, The Simon D Show, and episode one of Crossroads. Tonight's program highlights on KYTV, the television of the future. <laughs> However, we have just heard that there has been a dramatic occupation of the embassy of the Turks and Caicos Islands, so instead we'll be keeping you up to date with events, bringing you serious and detailed analysis in a show we've called our Siege Side Special. <laughs> So, with our news team all ready to fill you in with up-to-the-minute reports on what's happening as it happens, let's take a commercial break. <laughs> Why do people choose Nutty Chock? Really great. Keeps you going. Jolly tasty. It's well filling, isn't it? I have one with morning coffee. I'm delicious. Oh, it's just a job when you're feeling like peckish, isn't it? Love the hazelnuts. Look out! It's gorgeous. In my opinion, it's the best chocolate on the market. Nutty Chop? I reckon they squeeze it out of a dog. <laughs> Nutty Chop. Only one person in ten realises they squeeze it out of a dog. KYTV! Welcome back to KYTV. I'm Mike Flex. You're watching the Siege Side Special. Yes, we're all uh, settling down for what we expect to be quite a mammoth show, but don't worry, we'll be trying to bring you lots of excitement, as always, on KYTV. <laughs> And, of course, we'll all be worrying about the fate of the hostages. Though not too much, of course, because we understand that none of them are actually British. <laughs> but from the uh, comfort of the studio, let's go straight down to the embassy and talk to our man, Mike Channel. Hello, Mike. Uh, hi, Mike. So tell us, uh, what's happening down there? Well, Mike, let me say, first of all, it's impressive how quickly the squad arrived here. This van behind me, for example, arrived within minutes of the siege starting. And that's the police monitoring van, is it? Uh, no, Mike, that's our outside catering van. <laughs> and that was followed minutes later by our makeup and wardrobe van, the electrician's deluxe camperette, and the giant mobile home where our head of carpets has set up his headquarters. <laughs> well, thank you, Michael. We'll be back to you later. Anna. Mike. Well, the siege is now well underway. Best coverage, of course, live on KYTV, so stay tuned. <laughs> We fed a number of statistics into our graphic computer here so that we can show you exactly what's happening in a simplistic and patronising way as possible. <laughs> First off, of all the people we asked, 34% favoured an all-out frontal assault on the embassy, SAS style. 48% favoured sitting it out and waiting. And the remaining 96% thought there was something wrong with our computer's arithmetic. <laughs> Broken my nail. Mike. Anna. Nevertheless, it shows a staggering increase in favour of all-out brute force, and consequently we understand that that is precisely what the police authorities are thinking of using. Anna. Police Commissioner Compton. Well, Anna, the standard procedure in a siege of this sort is to try to establish a sympathetic rapport with the terrorists. And that's just what we're doing now. Oh, you bloody clowns! Come out with your hands up or go in there and shove off a ton of dynamite up your jacksies! Yes, I see. Well, it's time now to turn our attention to the government's response to all this. With us now is Sir Anthony Trollope, government spokesman and MP for Safe Seat on the World, who is talking to our latest recruit, Martin Brown, fresh from his triumph on the, <laughs> as the weatherman on Anglia Television. <laughs> Weekends only. Martin. Hannah. Martin. Hannah. Martin. Oh, yes, that's me, isn't it? Yes. And yes, indeed, that's right. Thank you very much. So, um, and so, Sir Anthony uh, Trollope, uh, <laughs> Sir Anthony, uh, how, um, uh, or, or rather, rather, why, um, or uh, Sir Anthony Trollope, uh, uh, who, um, uh, who are you? <laughs> Sir Anthony Trollope. Yes, that's right. Yes, uh, thank you very much. So, um, so, uh, what, um... So what? <laughs> so what? So what? 
<laughs> yes. Uh, so what? If you have anything important to ask me? Uh, yes, of course. Um, so, yes. Um, what now? <laughs> what now? What now? Yes, ten out of ten. Absolutely right. I can tell you've been... Um, so, uh, Sir, Sir Anthony... Um, <clears throat> Sir Anthony Trollope... MP. <laughs> How does it feel? How does it feel? Keep asking me these ridiculous questions. What now? How does it feel? What are you talking about? I don't know. I didn't think I asked you what you were talking about in actual fact, but never mind. Try and pay attention. So, um, <laughs> now, um, uh, well, where is it? What? <laughs> but, but, but what is it then? Yes. What's what? Well, what's what indeed? I think that's what we'd all like to know, yes. Um, and so there you are, having clarified the government's position. It's back to you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Getting better, I thought, Anna. <laughs> hmm. And Martin uh, is, in fact, off on his way now to bring us his on-the-spot report from the Embassy itself. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mike. Just think, for another five pounds, we could have got Keith Chegwin. <laughs> <laughs> Terrorism, of course, is always... <laughs> ..is always a threat for the traveller. Um, Anna, you've uh, just returned from Tuscany. Mmm, that's right. <laughs> have a good holiday. Uh, no, thanks, Mike. I've already had one. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pick up KYTV, all you need is a ten-foot satellite dish like this one, <laughs> attachable to your roof with just one ordinary nail. <laughs> Get yours now. <laughs> Yes, just a reminder that you're watching this Siegeside special on KY Telly, the only uh, television station bringing you both the front and back of the building, so don't touch that dial. <laughs> and we're delighted to have some distinguished guests who rushed here the minute they realised that there was a chance of getting on television. <laughs> Sir Anthony Trollope, what are the government going to do? Uh, well, clearly at present we are weighing up the priority schedule of available options and pursuing a policy of waiting and watching rather than being stampeded into any rash or hasty measures. You're doing bugger all. <laughs> You're being quiescent. Yes, that's another word for it. Um, General John Wig of Her Majesty's Royal Straitjackets. <laughs> We should starve these people of the oxygen of publicity. Stop giving them access to the media. Absolutely. Keep the terrorists off the television. No, I'm talking about the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we understand that the uh, people who have occupied the embassy are members of the obscure Akhavi sect. Now, with us is Christopher Coote, the world's leading expert on the Akhavi, a man who has lived with them and studied them for over 20 years and who undoubtedly has some extremely valuable insights into the situation. Yes. Well, I... well, I'm afraid uh, we haven't got time because <laughs> I believe we have a statement now from the Prime Minister. Well, I'm sorry, but my cows aren't going to have these injections. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, uh, we seem to have the wrong piece of film there, but uh, I understand that we can now hear the Prime Minister's words of comfort for the hostages. Bloody great needles. <laughs> How would you like one of them shoved out your bottom? <laughs> well, unless I'm very much mistaken, I don't think that is the Prime Minister. <laughs> But I believe we do have her coming up now. I would just like to say that this government, while aware of the possible suffering involved, intends to take a firm stand on this issue. So it is with regret that I say that these cattle have got to have these injections. <laughs> Oh, well, some important words from the Prime Minister there. Um, Christopher Coote, I'm sorry that we uh, cut you off before when uh, you're about to give us a fascinating insight into the minds of the terrorists. Never mind. Well, and there's... I'm sorry to have to cut you off again <laughs> because it's time now to take a look at a dramatic reconstruction of the events leading up to the Embassy siege. Mike. <laughs> Yes, uh, incredibly, this has been put together in a few hours since the start of the siege here, and I should warn you that you may be disturbed by some of the things that you see. In particular, the appalling quality of the acting. <laughs> One of the clearest identifications of the terrorists comes from a shopkeeper. Yes, boys? 
At first, she was unable to understand what they wanted, and since the only word she could make out was embassy, she remembers at first mistakenly giving them a packet of cigarettes. But importantly, two of the men turned out to speak English. No! We want to know where the embassy is! As you can hear, one of the men appeared to be from the Middle East, while the other had a slightly South American accent. Yes, could you please tell us where the embassy is? Let's just hear those accents again. No! We want to know where the embassy is! Yes, could you please tell us where the embassy is? Astonishingly bad, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> we now believe the leader of the group is one Hassan Datsuma Bebe. In 1968, he was in Paris for the famous student riots in the Latin Quarter. And if we slow the film down, and zoom in on one of the student protesters captured on amateur film here, we can see that it is absolutely impossible to make his face out. <laughs> in the days leading up to the siege, he and the others are believed to have stayed in the small bed and breakfast in Earl's Court, where they planned the embassy takeover with mathematical precision. <laughs> Early this morning, they slipped quietly out of the house without waking anybody. <laughs> We then believe they stocked up on provisions from a local supermarket, enough to last them perhaps for a lengthy siege. Five packets of Italian biscuits, two dozen sesame drumsticks, a wide assortment of seasonal salads, a chocolate spice upside down cake, and four packets of herbal tea. What happened in the Excuse final... Me. It'll be £12.60, please. <laughs> what happened in the final crucial stages leading up to the siege is as yet unclear. But... Thank you. Could I have a seat, please? <laughs> but we understand that it resembles this artist's impression. Thank you. <laughs> oh, holy smoke! It's a siege! <laughs> well, many thanks to our children's animation department for that. <laughs> Mike, I believe things are hotting up down there at the Embassy. Not in any meteorological sense of the word, no, Mike. But uh, no matter, because I'm about to have a brief word with someone who we believe is actually about to go in and talk to the terrorists. A man who could have been hand-picked for the job by a blind man without any fingers. <laughs> our own Martin Brown. So, uh, are you nervous, Martin? Um, no, not really, Mike. You sound terrified. No, I always sound like this. Oh, yes, yeah, so you do. I was forgetting. So, uh, what is your plan to deal with the terrorists? Sir? Well, uh, what, I, what I think I'll probably do is I'll uh, sit down with them and uh, just listen to their side of the argument, Mike. Mm -hmm. And how is your Arabic? I've had a lesson. And what can you say? Imi uh, ishta in mana. What does that mean? My pencil is on the floor. <laughs> well, I'm sure all you'll need when negotiating with blood-crazy fanatics is to be able to say, my pencil is on the floor. In me is that in mana. Oh, you're able to say it twice. That'll come in handy. Mm. Anything else? Uh, yes. Um, mia ahala bella mania. Meaning? Um, death to your wives and children, oh bastards. <laughs> yes, that's always a good one to fall back on, isn't it? Mm. Well, good luck, Martin. I'm sure you won't need it. Thank you. Much. And send us a postcard, <coughs> won't you? Where from? Beirut. You're watching <laughs> KYTV. Uh -huh. Seaside Special! Seaside Special! Watch it! And you rejoin us with some dramatic and important news. Apparently, KYTV have just sold three more satellite dishes in the Basildon area! <laughs> <laughs> Super! Mike. Well, with us now, we have a man who knows the terrorists very well, but to avoid placing him in any personal danger, he has asked to remain anonymous. Now, Mr. X, I believe you've known the terrorists for some time. Well, that's great. Apparently, in order to avoid any personal identification, Mr. X has also requested not to speak. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. X, you, uh, you uh, know the terrorists very well. <laughs> no, but you know them quite well. Yes, good, fine. Um, so where exactly did you meet them? <laughs> I'm sorry, perhaps I should rephrase that. Um, did you meet them in Libya? A little bit. You met them in a little bit of Libya. O almost Libya. Yes, yes, somewhere near Libya. Not near Libya. Era. Oh, I'm sorry, sounds like Libya. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't played the game for a while. Yes, OK. <laughs> Sounds like Libya. Syria. Syria. Uh, Soria. 
Surya. Surya. Shorter, shorter. Hurry, hurry. Uh, uh. Longer. Hurry, hurry. Surry. Surry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't think it sounds a bit like Libya. <laughs> so never mind, thanks uh, very much for coming along and uh, not talking to us. And uh, we'll be sending you your free satellite dish onto your uh, home in Camberley, Mr Henderson. <laughs> Well, let's go back and join our, our man out there, our spy who's still not yet come in from the cold, as it were. Mike. <laughs> Incredibly funny, Mike. <laughs> and no news as yet about Martin Brown, but we have heard that since he went in, the terrorists have taken one more hostage. They've not released a name, unfortunately, but given that no one else has actually been inside the embassy, I think we've got a pretty clear idea as to who it might be. <laughs> so there we are. That's about as unpredictable as leaves falling in autumn. Anyway, uh, we'll keep you posted as to the developments on that front. Mike. Uh, no, Anna. Hmm. <laughs> Mike. Well, we've had quite a few phone calls from viewers who are watching this Siege Side special. And Mrs Cordingly of Kent says, I think it's terrible. And she continues, What has happened to the weather forecast? And <laughs> Mrs Briley of Cheltenham says she's enjoying the show very much and... Could you please tell me what the signature tune is? <laughs> Well, I'm sorry we haven't got any particularly dramatic pictures to bring you at present, but do stay tuned and hopefully before too long we'll be seeing lots of smoke and the SAS swinging around on ropes. So don't let the kids go to bed yet. <laughs> Well, here in the studio, we're going to discuss some of the serious, complicated issues involved in terrorist action of this sort. And perhaps we can start by addressing ourselves to the question, is the taking of innocent lives a good thing or not. <laughs> Sir Anthony Trollope, death, is it a bad thing? I think for the person dying, I would have to say yes. <laughs> and as for those perpetrating the crime? Well, I am a reasonable man and a rational one, but I would say that it wouldn't do any harm at all to string them up by their testicles for a week. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Sharon Starlight, you're an acrobat and a high-wire circus performer, and I think consequently in the wrong studio. <laughs> Great. Um, Chris Coote. Chris, um, mass murderer. Fair means to an end? Uh, well, as you know, I'm an expert oh, on the... Oh, good Lord, no. General? I'm oh, so sorry. I was listening to the test match. <laughs> uh, Sir Anthony Trollope, should we ever concede to the terrorist demands? Uh, we should, in my opinion, uh, never give in to any of their demands, except in one situation. And what's that? That's if I happen to be one of the hostages. <laughs> in I see. which case, I would strongly advocate giving them absolutely everything they ask for. <laughs> yes, well, that seems reasonable. I think so. I'm sorry I can't sit here listening to this. Why not? The seats are incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, General. I'll have my cushion. There oh, you thank you very much. Great. Well, um, let's, uh, let's take some questions from our studio audience here. Yes, uh, lady at the back with a hand up. Yes, you, madam. Can I go to the toilet, please? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's just to the left at the back. Thank you. OK, great. A uh, gentleman here in front of you. Uh, no, thanks. I went before I came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, the person with his hand up. Yes, you, sir. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to ask Sir Anthony uh, if he'd agree with me that if young people were more responsible nowadays and if there were fewer homosexuals taking drugs, <laughs> then they wouldn't not so many terrorists blowing up innocent civilians. <laughs> well, I applaud the sentiment, obviously. Uh, but unfortunately, I think you probably have the IQ of a toothbrush. <laughs> so I can't actually agree with you, I'm afraid. Right, um, woman in green pullover. Uh, did you say left and then right? <laughs> <laughs> no, right then left. Thank you. OK, yes. Um, man in uh, red shirt and white tie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Not, not you three, the one at the front, please. Uh, yes, yes. I'm a professor of uh, Middle Eastern Studies at the London School of Oriental Sciences, and I've just finished reading Christopher Coote's, I think, definitive paper on the Akhavi sect, and I just wanted to ask Sir Anthony Trollope, which eight gramophone records would you choose if you were marooned <laughs> on a desert island? Well, I'm a bit of a fan of Scritti Politi. <laughs> 
Uh, well, um, sadly, sadly, we don't have time to hear Sir Anthony's reply to that question. Fascinating as it would have been to know his particular taste in music. Because I'd like to bring in Christopher Coote at this point. Yes, as far as I... I'd like to, but I'm afraid we haven't got time. Uh, because, as you may know, the Akavi are a bit of an unknown sect to us. But clearly it is important in understanding their motivation to take a serious, analytical look at what they believe in. So we're delighted to have compiled for you this rundown of their top ten holy creeds. Woo! At number ten, the undying quest for an independent state of Akavi. At number nine, fanatical dedication to the teaching of Rama Shekel. Still at number eight, the condemnation of Western materialism and anything rude. In at number seven, the deification of camels. At number six, a non-mover, the immediate covering up of Samantha Fox's body. <laughs> At number five, the immediate covering up of Samantha Fox's mouth. <laughs> Down to four, the abolition of Honda Civics and their owners. <laughs> At three, the eradication of chicken nuggets. <laughs> At two, the unconditional stoning to death of Bonnie Langford. <laughs> Number one was, up until just ten minutes ago, the total and everlasting allegiance to the Akhavi cause. But we hear it has just been changed to the immediate execution of all people called Martin Brown. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. Uh -huh. And how is little Trevor? Well, quite a handful. I'm forever changing his nappies. Why is that, Mary? because little Trevor keeps piddling in them, Jim. Oh, yes. And my hands are always getting wet, too. Well, you need new nappy blot. New nappy blot? Yes. Unlike ordinary nappies, new nappy blot doesn't let the wetness through because they're super absorbent. So they keep your hands nice and dry and mean less work. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. Did you try new nappy blot? Oh, yes, I did, June. They really are super absorbent. Now my hands stay nice and dry. And I haven't had to change Trevor's nappy for a mum. <laughs> There's just one thing, though, June. What's that, Mary? He's getting a little heavy to lift up. <laughs> oh! Keeps the wetness in and keeps your hands dry. KYTV! You join us as a dramatic news is just coming in because we gather that it has at last happened, as we feared, one of the armed terrorists who was guarding Martin Brown on his own in a locked cell has, in a vicious and savage act, shot himself. <laughs> an action which I'm sure many of us can sympathise with. Mike. Thanks very much, Mike. Well, I believe we can now go straight back to you and talk to another of the uh, officers in charge whose name is Phil In, apparently. Phil In. So, oh, me, Phil In, I yes, I'm sorry. Um, well, obviously, politically sensitive situations like this one need all the care and support they can get from the media. So here on the Siege Side Special, we're going to start our very own specially devised Guess the Weight of the Hostages competition. <laughs> Time. Yes, all you have to do is guess the collective weight of the 14 hostages at the end of the siege, whenever that is, and you'll win a super siege side special t shirt and mug tree. Smashing prizes. Well, <laughs> we gather things are in a delicate state at the embassy currently. Uh, General, what would you be doing at the minute? I'd probably be pottering around my garden dead hitting the roses or... <laughs> no, I mean if you were in charge of things down there at the embassy. Oh, I see what you mean, yes, yes well. <coughs> uh, I'd make quite sure that uh, they were given the sort of lesson to make damn sure that this sort of thing didn't happen again. You'd take a tough line with the terrorists. No, the hostages. <laughs> well, quite frankly, their very existence is an incitement to the terrorists to do exactly the same thing all over again. I see. Well, it's uh, certainly an unusual viewpoint. Oh, I'm not afraid to put my money where my mouth is. Anna. Well, I certainly don't want the general's money after it's been up his bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, putting the general's bottom to one side for the minute. Uh, Chris Coote. Yes? Nothing. Sir Anthony. 
Well, let me say at this point that by speaking slowly and, and looking very serious and with lots of emphasis and then raising my voice gradually and thumping the table for extra emphasis, I truly believe I can force a round of applause out of the mindless sheep in the studio audience here tonight. <laughs> Lovely. Well, general discussion. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at my notes. Um, <laughs> general discussion. Um, <laughs> general. Uh, yes? Would you like to start a general discussion? No. <laughs> oh, right. Well, very well. Um, let me ask you this, then. I believe you have a theory about how to end the siege. Yes, I do. <clears throat> at ease. <laughs> I can illustrate it over here with this model of the embassy. <clears throat> Firstly, we distract the terrorist's attention to the back of the building. How do we do that? Well, that's not really my area. But I would suggest getting a large number of army and police marksmen to assemble ordered lines and then play a game of pass the orange. <laughs> right. Um, then what? Then, in the split second that the terrorist's attention is focused out of the back window, we simply Prize open the building, <laughs> brush in, and take them from behind. <laughs> Simple as that. Yes. yes. Of course, I don't mean take them from behind in the old army sense. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, it's an absolute doddle. Well, thank you, General, very much, and uh, I can honestly say that that is something I shall long regard as one of the most stupid ideas I've ever heard. Thank you very much. And now let's go over to the Embassy for urgent news. Mike. Yes, well, astonishingly, Mike, just moments ago, the siege finally stopped, as indeed it did the circulation in my right foot. So, uh, Police Commissioner Compton, how exactly did it happen? Well, there was an old police trick which fortunately fooled them. Uh, what happened was a uh, police marksman distracted the terrorists with a game of pass the orange. Then we <laughs> simply eyes the building open, rushed in, and took them from behind. Of course, I don't mean that in the old army sense of the word. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, as you can see, the hostages uh, are coming out now, finally, obviously shattered by the ordeal. <laughs> So that's it. Uh, all the hostages released, all that is but one, who we understand is still inside with some of the remaining terrorists. <laughs> You, you fundamental obscurist death squads. <laughs> well, it's time now to say goodbye to BBC viewers who leave us for their own programmes. Meanwhile, on KYTV, naked women wrestling in mud. Yeah. <laughs>